Hello, and welcome to this lesson on lines, scales, and labels with ggplot2. So far, we've done scatter plots and learned how to change the color, fill, shape, and opacity of points. Now we're going to be making line graphs like this one with geomline. We'll be also changing things like the color, transparency, and size, but this time we will add more aesthetics specific to lines and we'll also learn how to manipulate the scales, the X and Y continuous scales, so that we can relabel them or rescale them. And finally, we will add labels to our plot, like a title, a subtitle, or a caption, to add more descriptive information to the plot. So let's get started. If you'd like a more detailed description of all the things we're going to learn today, you can pause here and read the learning objectives, but I will go through them at the end of the lesson to make sure that we've covered everything. To get started, we need to load in the packages that we will be using in this lesson. In this lesson, we're just going to use two packages, Tidyverse, which contains ggplot2 for data visualization, as well as packages like dplyr, which we'll use for data manipulation and data wrangling as well. Lastly, we're going to load in the gapminder package. This package contains the data that we're going to be using to create line graphs in this lesson. In February 2006, a Swedish physician and global health professor named Hans Rosling gave a very famous TED talk called The Best Stats You've Ever Seen. In this TED talk, he presented global health and development data from around the world and showed how the gap between the West and the rest is decreasing as more children are educated everywhere, life expectancy increases, income increases, and health in general is getting better. In this lesson, we will be using data collected by the Gapminder Foundation. You can visit the Gapminder website and use their interactive visualization tools to create plots like this. This was the very famous plot that Hans Rosling presented, and we will be creating it in the next lesson. In this lesson, however, we're going to stick to line graphs. We don't have to download the Gapminder data from the website. We can access a clean subset of their data from the Gapminder R package, which we just loaded. So if you run this line of code, it will load in the Gapminder data frame to your environment. Now we can print and view the data frame. Each row is a country year combination, which means it gives us some metrics for that country for that year. The first column we have is country, which simply tells us the country name. The continent is the geographic region which the country belongs to. In a moment, I'll show you that these don't match up with what we traditionally think of as continents. The year is the calendar year in which the data were recorded. Then we have life expectancy, the population, and gross domestic product per capita. The five continents that are in Gapminder are as follows. Note that the countries in the Americas are all put into one region. Line graphs are especially useful for showing the relationship between two numerical variables, just like scatter plots. This is especially useful when one of those numerical variables has an inherent ordering to it, like some notion of time. For example, you could put minutes, hours, or days on the x-axis, and that would make it a time series plot. Let's start by making a time series plot. First, we'll create a new data frame with only data from the US. Now that we created this new data frame called GAPUS, containing only GAPminded data for the United States, we're ready to feed this data into ggplot2 and create this line graph of life expectancy over time. We will start off as usual by initiating the ggplot function. The first required layer is always the data. Data in this case equals GAPUS. After specifying the data frame we need, we need to tell ggplot what to plot on the x and y axes of this line graph. To map variables to aesthetics, we give them to the mapping argument under the AES function. Here the only aesthetics we're going to provide is x and y. The x variable is going to represent time, so that will be our year variable from the GAPUS data frame. Next, our y variable will be life expectancy. 
Now finally, we want to add our geometries layer. To make a line graph, we need to add the geom function geom line. We do this by adding a plus sign and then starting on a new line. Now you can run this code and it will produce the following time series plot. You can see that from 1952 to 2007, life expectancy steadily increased in the US from around 68 to well over 78 by the end of 2007. I broke down this code as I was writing it, but if you would like a written description of it, you can feel free to pause here and this goes through the code piece by piece to explain what it does. Once you're confident that you understand how ggplot is used to make a line graph, it is time for you to practice. In this practice question, we would like you to create a time series plot using a line graph of GDP per capita over time. You will be using the same gap US data frame that we used in the last example, but instead of life expectancy, you will be plotting GDP. Welcome back. I hope that practice question went well and you should have gotten a simple line graph that looks like this. You can see that just like life expectancy, GDP per capita also steadily increases over time. We've made these two simple line graphs, but they are quite bland. We can add aesthetics to them to make them look more visually appealing. We can add fixed aesthetics to a line graph just like what we did with scatter plots. Aesthetics that we've already looked at, like color and size, apply to line graphs too. Let's add some fixed aesthetics to our original line graph code of life expectancy over time. Remember that fixed aesthetics go inside the geom function. So here I put it inside geom line and not in mapping equals AES. Next, I will increase the size of the line for it to be somewhat thicker. The default size is about 0.5 millimeters. I'll up it to 1.5. And here we have this line, which is much thicker than before, and the color is changed to this sort of purpley color. In this lesson, we'll add a new aesthetic to our repertoire called line type. This one is specific to lines only. The argument name for setting line type is just line type or LTY for short, whichever you prefer. And you set it equal to either an integer from one through six or to the character string, and it will give you the line design that is corresponding to it. So now let's add a line type to our previous line graph. So now in addition to color and size, I will add line type after that. The line graphs we've created so far are quite informative. They can tell us the general trend that is happening over time. However, we don't actually know how many data points are collected or in which intervals of time the data were collected. We can improve the readability of these graphs by adding a layer of points. So this time, our data, our X and Y mappings, will be represented by more than one geometric object, lines and points. As long as two geoms are compatible, then they can be layered on top of each other to represent these same data points, the same mappings. In this case, geom point and geom line can be combined because they both accept mappings of numerical variables to the x and y axes. So here we have our original line graph, which just looks like this. And now we can add geom line by adding a plus sign and going on a new line at the end of this code. Now here you can see exactly which data point the line is connecting together. We can make the plot slightly more attractive by customizing our geoms and adding different fixed aesthetics to them. So here I increase the size of the line and change the color of the line to light gray, 
increase the size of the points and change the color of the points to steel blue. So the fixed aesthetics go individually in GM line and GM point and then are only applied to either GM line or GM point depending on where you put them. Now it's your turn to practice again. This time you will be creating a line graph plus points of GDP per capita over time for the US using the GAP US data frame. You will be changing the line type, so add line type as a fixed aesthetic to any one that you like and change the color as well to any valid R color that you'd like. So write your code, submit it, and check it using the check function. Please pause here to work on this practice question in your RMD and then come back when you're ready. Welcome back. I hope that practice question went well and you were able to play around with the fixed aesthetics of GM line and GM point separately. This is the plot that I came up with. In addition to fixed aesthetics, we can also map data to different aesthetics and create multiple lines. In the previous section, we just looked at one country, so we only had one line. But we can look at the time series of data from many different countries and separate those lines. So let's create a new data set and add a couple more countries to the US. So here I'm creating a data set called Gap Mini where I added Australia and Germany. You can see that this data frame has 36 rows, which means there are three countries and there's 12 years of data for each country. Now we could just take the previous code that we used to plot the singular graph for Gap US and change Gap US to Gap Mini. But if you execute this code, the resulting plot will look like this. Here there are a lot of zigzags and it's not clear how the trajectory of each country is separate. If you add a layer of points, it'll make clear what's going on here. By looking at the points, if you look vertically, you can see that there are three separate points at three different levels. This suggests that the three countries have separate trajectories but the lines have connected all the points together and are not separated by country. So needless to say, this is not a very helpful plot for trying to compare these trends that we want to see between countries. If we want ggplot to map data from each country separately, we can add what is called the group aesthetic inside the mapping argument. After x and y, I'm going to add the group aesthetic and set it equal to the country variable that the lines are separated by each value of country. Now this is much better. We have three separate lines, one for each value of the country variable, US, Australia, and Germany, which is in our gap mini data set. Now that we have these three separate lines, we can also apply fixed aesthetics to them. Here I added line type, color, and size to line and change the size for points. Admittedly, it's not a very attractive plot, but it does show you that you can have different aesthetics applied to it and the data will still stay grouped because you added group equals country to the mapping argument. However, notice that line type, size, and color stay consistent across the three lines. It doesn't allow us to distinguish which country the data is coming from. I don't know which line belongs to Germany or Australia or the United States. Or We can add aesthetic attributes that are visual and connect them to countries so that someone looking at this with fresh eyes would be able to tell which line belongs to which country. So here, instead of group, I'll use color because group will separate the lines, but it doesn't tell me which country is which line. Color, on the other hand, will. So now we can see that red belongs to Australia, green to Germany, and blue to the United States. When you're combining geoms like this, you don't always have to have the mapping within the main ggplot function call. Of course, you need to put x and y here so that these can both be inherited and you don't have to repeat yourself in these. But if you just wanted to map color to geom line, but not to geom point, you can add mapping equals AES within here. Let's try that. So 
So here, I've added a mapping equals AES as a direct argument of geom line. It's okay that there's two of them. Here we have it in ggplot already. These mappings, x and y, are going to be passed down to both the geom line and geom point, but this mapping, color equals country, will only be applied to geom line. Now, when I run the code, you see that color has been mapped to the lines, but not to the point. Now you can get even more practice with this with a practice question. So let's see what we have next. So first up, we would like you to make a population growth time series chart. Now you'll be using GeomLine to do this as usual, but the trick is this time we want you to create a plot based not on written instructions, but something that you can see. Your assignment is to create a population growth chart with these aesthetic mappings. I won't spell out for you what they are, but you can get an idea of what it is by looking at the keys and the axis labels to see which mappings you need to put on your plot. After you've created this plot, you have a second practice question where you'll need to add a layer of points. Once you have the correct answer to the previous practice question, you'll take that code, add a layer of points, and put in the right aesthetic mappings so that your plot looks like this one over here. Welcome back. Those were a couple of challenging practice questions, but I hope you were able to get them and make full use of the check and hint functions to help you along. Next, we're going to be looking at scales. Whenever we add aesthetic mappings in ggplot, it will automatically scale the variable to fit the aesthetic. Now what do we mean by this? Let's look at an example. Here, this plot has three aesthetic mappings. In the code, you'll see that we've mapped three different variables to x, y, and color aesthetics. The x and y positions are aesthetic mappings as well. That's important to keep in mind. The variables that we mapped to x and y were continuous variables, so ggplot has automatically scaled a continuous axis. Here, it looks at what the minimum and the maximum life expectancy was for this mini data set, and then divided the scale accordingly and decided to label it for every four years. To customize x and y scales or any scales in ggplot, we use the scale family of functions. Think back to this ggplot syntax template. Here we have data, aesthetics, and geometries. These are the three inputs that we've been using so far. We haven't touched any of them below, but congrats. First up, we're going to be looking at scale functions. Several different scale functions exist, and each one of those scale functions accepts different sets of arguments. There are a lot of different scale functions in ggplot. There are general purpose scales, x and y position scales, color and fill, as well as shape and size. But today we're just going to be focusing on scale x continuous, scale y continuous, and log scaled to transform an x or y axis to be log scaled. So the first element of scales that we're going to change are these scale breaks. For this, we're going to use a new subset of the Gapminder data frame. So I want to create a new subset of Gapminder with the countries India, China, and Thailand. So what you're going to do is filter country and then this in with two percentage signs on either side and then you create a character vector of the countries that you want. Pay attention here because you'll need to do this for some of the practice questions in this lesson. Now we take this data and use a simple line graphs code. We've been doing this with life expectancy, but now we're going to do it with GDP per capita. Great, so now we have this line graphs. They're colored by country, and we can clearly see which line belongs to which country. So here we see these scale breaks. These don't match up with the years in the data frame. So if you take gap mini 2 and pipe it into unique, function, it will tell you exactly how many different years there are. And as we noticed before, it starts from 1952 to 2007, and the data is collected every five years. But on this plot, 
these are not the numbers that we see. So we want to change the x-axis scale to give us these years instead of the years on that plot. How do we tell ggplot to do that? We're going to use scale continuous functions that change the position of scale breaks on the x and y axes. Quickly, I'm going to show you the help documentation for these functions. So it tells us that we have scale x continuous and scale y continuous to change x and y axis scales for continuous variables, which is what we have, year and GDP per capita are both continuous variables. So now we can look at which arguments scale x continuous takes and scale y continuous also does the same. The one that we want to use is breaks, which is over here. So breaks equals a certain thing. This is the default input, but we want to put in our character vector of years. So we look closely at what other inputs the breaks argument can take. And here it says you can add a numeric vector of position. So that's what we're going to do. We're going to add breaks inside scale x continuous and add a vector. First though, we're going to create that vector. One way is to do it manually and type out all the years. Don't do that, it takes a while and you might make a mistake. We are going to create a vector with the sequence function, which is what I recommend for creating even scale breaks. So what we want is to start from 1952, go to 2007, and we want it every five years. We can easily give this to sequence So we write from 1952, from 1952 to 2007, and then by five, because we want the years to be every five. So I will, and this, and it gives you the exact same vector as we got from typing it manually and the same vector that we see of unique years. Now, why don't we just use the vector created by unique? This is because you might have other data sets that are not complete. In the Gapminder data frame, it has data for every single year, but you might have another data set where you want to plot year on the x-axis or any other number, and you could have missing data for a certain year. In that case, if you use unique from the data frame and that year is missing, that year won't be labeled. So that's why I suggest using sequence if you want to have evenly spaced numbers. So then you're going to copy this sequence code. Save it and we'll paste it in soon into our ggplot code. Now this is the code that made the last line graphs plot. And to modify the scale breaks, we add the scale function. So first we add the plus sign because we're going to add a new layer and in ggplot we chain functions together with a plus sign. So don't forget that. Then we add scale x continuous. Within scale x continuous, the breaks argument will be equal to that sequence vector that we copied. And I will just paste that in. So breaks equals to this numeric vector and it will label the plot. It will change the current numbers that are on the x-axis. It will change it to whatever is in that sequence vector that we supplied to break. So let me run the new code and here you have it. The years now match up with the years in our data set. You can see that they are labeled like this and each year corresponds to a data point. We can make this more clear by adding points. We add geom point and you don't need to add any arguments in there. It will inherit the aesthetic mappings from before. And now that the points are added, you can see more clearly that the points line up exactly with these scale breaks. And so the years are clearly visible and you can tell exactly which year, let's say China took over India here and went over and we see that happened in 1977. Rather than copying and pasting that sequence vector each time, we can save the vector as an R object. So I'm gonna save it to gap years. Here you add just the regular assignment operator and then paste in that same sequence code. Now gap years is saved to your environment. And in this code, we're just gonna delete this and put in gap years. Great, so you see it gives us the correct plot. 
and now we'll use gap years in our rest of our plots in order to make sure the x-axis is scaled by the years in the data set. Now it's time for you to practice adjusting the scale breaks on a continuous scale, except in addition to scale x continuous, I want you to add scale y continuous. The idea is exactly the same. Inside scale y continuous, you put breaks equal to, and then the numeric vector of where you want to break the axes. And so what I will ask you to do is to add y-axis breaks for GDP per capita, and I want your graph to look like this. So instead of giving you which numbers exactly you need to plot in the numeric vector, you can look at where the scale breaks you need to have are, and you can use sequence to know where to start from, where to end up, and by how much do you want to space out the breaks. Welcome back. The next thing we're going to adjust on these continuous scales is to transform them mathematically. So we can use a log function to rescale one of the axes. In the logarithmic scaling examples, I'm going to add a new country to our data set and I'll soon tell you why. I had chosen India, China, and Thailand because they had a similar range of GDP per capita. Now I'm going to add New Zealand, which has a much higher GDP per capita than these countries over the time period we're looking at. So this will create gap mini 3 with these four countries. And as we expect, gap mini 3 has now 48 rows, 12 for each of the four countries. So now we're going to recreate the previous line graph. So all I've done is copy over the code and change gap mini 2 to gap mini 3 for our new data subset. So now you can see that the three countries we plotted before are kind of squished at the bottom of the plot and then we have New Zealand that is much higher. Because those three countries are sort of squished along here, it's harder to read the patterns that we saw before. So remember before we noticed how India and China were going up and down and that in 1972, China took over India? Now this is really hard to see that in this plot because they take up such a small amount of space. So one way to fix this would be to rescale the y-axis so that we have wider breaks here and we can squish the top part so that we use the plot space better and these patterns will be easier to read. So we're going to use scale x log. Pardon me, we're going to use scale y log since we're transforming the y-axis. So we add the function scale y log 10 and then run this code. Now you can see how the ones that were squished together have been given more space and this empty space that was here before in New Zealand has been pushed up. Now pay attention to where the scale breaks are. Here we have 1,000, 3,000, 10,000, and 30,000. These numbers are not increasing linearly as they did before since they've been transformed onto a log scale. So now you can practice using scale y log 10. But first I would like you to subset data to just data for Uganda. Now I'm just checking that it looks right. Great, I have my data and the country is Uganda for all of them. So you're going to use the Gap Uganda data frame, the subset that we just created, and the following changes need to be made. You need to rescale the y-axis with scale log 10 and change the color and size of the line as fixed aesthetics. So you can change the color to any R color you'd like and perhaps increase the size so that the pattern is more clear. So please pause the video here, go in your RMD, and do this practice question. Come back when you're done and I'll show you what that would look like. All right, welcome back. And what you should have created is a plot that looks like this, where you see population increasing over time, but you have rescaled the axes so that it's not linear. And don't forget to use gap years 
in order to add scale breaks to your x-axis. I'll just show you a before and after of how it would look like if we didn't scale the y-axis by log. So this is what the population growth curve looks like when the y-axis is linear and then when you added log it kind of straightened it out. For this just one country it might not be super useful but when you have lots of countries and the population increases exponentially then y log can really help you with this. You can also change the country if you'd like to experiment to your own country or to any other country that you'd like to see what that looks like or add several countries and compare population growth. So far, we haven't added any text to our plots, but good plots need good labels. You want the reader to be able to look at it and understand what the data is representing without having to address any additional documentation. So here are five elements we're gonna add to our plot with the labs function. First, we have the title, which appears in large text at the top left of your plot. Below that, you add a subtitle, you can change the X and Y axis names, and you can rename also the title of the color scales or any other mapping scales that show up on the right of your plot. So let's get started. So here I've built upon our gap US plot that had both line graph and points on it. And I added in some of the elements that we did like rescaling the X axis breaks. Now let's add a title to the plot. First, let's change the X and Y axis title from their default variable names to something more understandable and readable. First, let's initialize the labs function, a plus sign, and then LABS. X equals year, we're just capitalizing Now we run this and then you can see that our axis titles have changed. Next we'll add a title at the top of the plot. So here again we work within labs and just add a comma and then a new argument. I'm just going to copy over. So we can see here that the title lifespan increases over time has been added. Next we'll add a subtitle. Oops, 1952. Next, we'll just add a small caption at the bottom of our plot. So we set caption equals, and I want to put the source of the data. So now you can see it's there in the corner in just a little tiny text and people can access that data if they'd like. Now the other thing we can change the label for is the title of a key. So I'm gonna go back to our plot of Gap Mini 2 that had India, China, and Thailand. Here I have modified some of the aesthetics. I changed the size of the lines and points. I added the points, rescaled the Y and X axis scale breaks and added these titles. So what we want to change is the color key title, which currently just says country. All I'm going to do is capitalize that. Now this is not a big deal in this plot, but sometimes if you have a odd variable name, like we do for life exp or something similar, then you want to make it more readable. Now the important thing to remember is you set the argument as the mapping aesthetic that was used to create that key. So since we did color equals country, right over here, color equals country. So the color title, we want country with a capital C. And we put color equal to 
there we go. Now let me show you what if I add another aesthetic mapping. Geom point, I'm going to change the size to be equal to the population variable. So you have to put in mapping equals AES for it to be equal to a variable. Size equals pop. India and China have a pretty big population, so they're going to be some big circles. And I'll also make the circles a little more transparent, so in case they overlap, you can see that more clearly. So that was the alpha argument. Oops, I made the common mistake that many people made and put alpha equals 0 0.5 within the mapping. This is a fixed aesthetic, so it should go outside. You can see that my brackets start and close and I want to put it outside. Now that should be fixed. And here you can see that these circles are increasing with time. That makes sense because we know that as time has passed since 1952, population has grown a lot over the years. And that gives us this scale where it tells us how big the circle is for what number of population and we want to rename pop to population. So here we go back to labs and think about what we want to set pop equal to. Pop was mapped to size, so if you thought it should be size equals population, you are correct. And now the title of the size key has been updated to population so that the reader clearly knows what these size are representing. Now you can practice doing labels. So choose three countries that you would like to plot. They can be any countries from the data frame. I'm pretty sure it's global, so all countries are represented. So remember how to use filter when there are multiple countries. You can refer back to previous examples to see how to get the syntax right for this. Once you have my gap mini, you will then use it to plot GDP over time. So year on the X axis, GDP on the Y axis, and then you will add a list of attributes that we've put here. Hello again. So your plot should look something like this. I went with the same data set for before with those three countries, but you can choose whatever you want so it'll look a little different. And if you added the aesthetics correctly, the lines and dots will look quite similar to this. And then there's a second practice question where you want to add labels to your plot. So it tells you what you need to label the title, subtitle, X and Y axes, and you'll need to capitalize the color legend title. So go ahead and you can pause again work in your RMV and come back after you finish this question. So my plot for that practice question looked like this. I added the labels. I think it looks quite nice with the lines being a bit transparent and the cleaned up scale breaks and titles. Now let's go through the learning objectives and summarize the concepts that we've covered in this lesson. First of all, we use geom line to create plots showing the relationship between two numerical variables, especially time series plots where we had some notion of time on the x-axis, such as year. Then we learned how to add geom point and add aesthetic modifications at the geometries level. And those got pretty complex, so you could add mappings and fix aesthetics on different layers now. The aesthetics we used were color, size, alpha, which we covered before, and group, which we used for line graph specifically. We then went over scales. You can modify both position scales on the X and Y axis and log scale. Lastly, we learned how to add labels to different parts of the plot. I hope now that you're comfortable with line scales and labels in ggplot, and you can test your knowledge on the quizzes on our website, so please visit the Graph Courses website and do the quizzes for this lesson. Good luck and hope to see you in the next video. For more resources, visit our website where you can track your progress 
access interactive quizzes and lesson notes and connect with our teachers and other learners like you. And if you'd like a more guided experience, we also offer live online boot camps with expert help. So join us at thegraphcourses.org to start your learning journey today.